Hi, today we're going to paint an Easter Bunny project and I've got this um, lacy banner. It's a surface, but you can use anything of your choice. This one's approximately eight inches wide and the painting area is about not quite nine inches. So anything that's about eight by nine or eight by ten should be a sufficient size or you can just enlarge or reduce the pattern to fit whatever surface you want to use. And we're going to use acrylics and I have prepared the surface by sealing it with a multi-purpose sealer, sand, letting that dry, then sanding, and then applying a coat of Americana sand, which is a, just a soft yellowy beige color. I find this just a nice basic color to start a lot, lot of projects. And then I've traced the design down with some gray graphite paper. So um, to do that, in case you aren't familiar with some basics, is you know I've put the tracing onto a piece of tracing paper using a I use a sharpie fine point pen, so you can kind of see through this. And then with some gray graphite paper, I position the the tracing where I want it on the board and slide the transfer paper underneath it, being sure that you have the, the side that transfers down. And then using a, a fine point stylus, I just go over the lines just lightly. You want to use enough pressure that your lines come through and you see them. You don't, but you don't want to press so hard that you cause any indentions in your your wood, or you know, transfer the lines too darkly. Then they're even harder to cover. If you do get them transferred too dark, take a soft white eraser. I like these, like Prismacolor soft erasers. They don't, they're really good. They don't leave any marks on your surface, and just lightly go over the lines. To soften them down. You want them light enough that you can fairly easily cover them with paint. So you can see I can just soften those. Be sure to clean away any eraser residue that you have once you're finished. Let's do a little bit more of this. You know, also to work, I've got a, a wax palette here to use for doing my side loads. And I have a, you can't see them here, they're off the camera, but I've got a variety of brushes. I like these Taclon brushes. These are um, Royal Fusion. They're a little bit, they have a little more body than some of the gold Taclon. So they're not, they're soft, but not, but they still have a lot of spring to them. So I've just got a variety of sizes of those. I've got a, a wet palette here that I have my paint on. You can see I've been using this one for a few projects, so it's getting kind of dirty. But it's got a sponge in the bottom that's wet, and then a piece of palette paper that's specially designed for this that a, you can use something like a kind of, um, I'm trying to think, like a deli paper. You don't want something that has a wax coating because you want the water to be able to come through. But if you set that up and keep it, you know, this is actually made to seal up. It's got a, a cover that goes on and keeps it pretty airtight. I can keep my paints in that and use them for several weeks at a time. Some of the colors will start getting crusty or dried up, but a lot of them will stay pliable and and wet, and I can just keep adding to, to them as I go along. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm using Traditions paint, and I like those because I don't like using a lot of colors, so I do a little bit of color mixing. 
Now you can also use um, Deco Art Americana. Those are also a good brand of paints or any other acrylics of your choice. We're going to just use some basic colors and so you should be e should be easy to substitute other colors for what we're using. The first thing we're going to do is work on the base color of the bunny. And for that I'm using the um, Traditions Raw Sienna and that's in Americana that would be something like a honey brown. It's just a, a warm honey color. And I'm just going to use this is a number 12 flat brush and I'm going to come in and just start basing the bunny in this color. Now when I come out to these edges we want these to be a little furry so I'm going to just I'm not going to make a real smooth line I'm just kind of wiggling my brush to give it a, a jagged edge and I'm just going to come through and try to get a fairly smooth coat of paint over this bunny's face. And I'm just slightly coming out over the edges because we want to cover those graphite lines eventually. And this is sort of transparent. I'm not going for a real solid color. I'm just letting some of that sand base coat color show through. I'm not going to go over his muzzle right here because we're going to put some white in that to make that more of a highlighted area. So he'll sort of be a two-tone bunny. This honey brown colors and then some white. And I'm not being real careful going around these eyes. I just, I can still see the graphite lines through them so we're going to go back in and base those with white in a little bit so I don't really care whether I'm just perfectly going around those. My goal is just to get a kind of an overall golden color to the bunny. And again when we come to these edges we're not trying to get a real smooth line. I'm just jagging around the edges so I'm going to have some fur like hair lines that will eventually be pulled out from there. And that's easier to do if you don't have a real sharp edge. If you create a sharp edge, then you'll get like a ridge that will show through when you put your first strokes over it. Now we can come up and do the ears the same way, but I'm just going to come around the edges of the ears. I don't want to do the center. So I'm just streaking that and letting those little edges fly out like little hairs. So I'm just going to come up around the tip. And we're going to later put some pink in the center. the same on the other ear. So we'll let that dry and we'll switch to a, a different color 
and we're going to do the hat and it's also going to be um, just a warm color but we're going to go to a, a little brighter yellow and I'm using a color called Indian yellow so any bright yellow color primary yellow or you could use marigold or anything in the Americana line that's a bright yellow so I'm just again going to fill in the hat crown and the brim. We're going to leave the, the band a different color, so I'm not going to paint that. We're just Again, I'm not going necessarily for a real solid coverage, so we're not, this is more of a, whoop, ruler fell over, uh, just a, a more transparent color over top of that base sand color. And go ahead and we'll fill in this under the brim. And later we'll darken that a little more. And because this is kind of transparent, we're not don't have to worry too much about coming up against the bunny's fur. It, it is transparent parent enough that you can see the fur under there. It's not really covering it. I'm just coming up to it and if I go over it a little bit, that's fine. Now the edges of these, I am trying to, the outer edges, trying to keep them a little more smooth, so just come out just onto your graphite line. We'll probably add some inking later to also help cover those. Let's see, we'll do some white on the muzzle and we'll fill in the eyes with white. I'm just going to sort of flip that bottom outer edge so it comes out over that fur a little bit. We'll have some furry edges. And then if you want to, um, let's see, let's paint his teeth. Get a, those will be white also, so we'll get a coat of white on his teeth. And then we're going to fill in his eyes with white, but I'm going to switch to a, a smaller brush. This is probably a little too big for the eyes, so I'm going to go to something that's oh, more in a, this is a number four. Anything that's somewhere around a quarter of an inch would work. So I'm not going to try to worry about painting just the white of the eye. I'm going to paint the whole eye in with white. still see my lines through it so we'll be able to fill in the color and the iris probably without retracing anything.
Okay, to get started with the bunny, we've added a just a, a light wash of the raw sienna over his face and ears, the edges of his ears. We've added a transparent layer of Indian yellow to the hat, some white to his eyes and muzzle, a little pink to his tongue and the inside of his ears, which is just a wash of naphthol red. If you get too heavy, just take while it's wet, take a soft paper towel and just blot a little bit off. Then we filled in his muzzle with some white and the eyes with some white and a little bit of pink on the tongue. Let's work on the hat and we're going to do some shading and sticking with our palette of colors, we're going to, to shade with the raw sienna, which is the, the honey color. I normally shade with a, or do floated color with an angle brush, but you can use a flat if you want. I'm using like a half inch. And I've wet the brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the raw sienna on it and blend it out on my palette. And then we're just going to float shade in some of the areas that are obviously going to be shaded. So we're going to go here under the brim when I float shade, I usually do just little short strokes, overlap a little bit, and then if I need to smooth out, I can come back and pull along. So we're going to do the top edge there, and then we're going to come on the other side and do the same thing. Okay, then we can do a little shading here on the ear, beside the ears, I should say, on the hat. And do that on the other side. And even come here above the ribbon that goes around the hat, the hat band, I guess we can call it. Do a little bit of float there. And you can see where that starts giving our hat just a little bit of dimension. So the last place, let's see, we can shade is a little bit here on the, the top of the hat brim. Again, I'm working that paint to my brush and I'm going to just come along here and Put a little bit out here to the outer edge. And come on the other side and do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to leave the center here, just soften that down so we don't have a, a lot right in the middle there. So we'll let that dry and move on to something else while we're waiting for that to dry because you don't want to do any additional floats over top of floats that are wet, otherwise you'll just pick up your color. Let's do um, some shading on the, the green ribbons. And to do that, I'm just going to use the phthalo green yellow just by itself. And we'll see how that goes. If it's too bright, we can add a little bit of raw sienna to it. But let's um, float a little here next to the ear on both sides. And a little bit on this outer edge of the ribbon. We'll do some here down around the, the bow. And we'll go inside the top of the loops 
I'm going to turn the board upside down, it's easier for me to work this direction. Do one side and then do the other. Let's do a little bit on the bottom of the knot. And I'm letting that come up a little bit in the middle just to, to give a little crease in it. So you can see we're starting to see some dimension to our bow. I'll smooth the side out just a little bit more. And we'll do some on this outer edge of the bow, starting just down from the top edge a little bit. We can actually pull in a little bit here to the center. So I'm going to work it first with the paint edge of my brush down, pull in towards the knot, and turn my flip my brush over so the paint's pointing up and I'm going to come and float right up against that. Just barely touch it. And that will give you a, a float that's soft on the top and bottom to give it a kind of an appearance of a little fold in that ribbon. And we can come back and reinforce that with some more floats later, but this will be just our first first shot at it. I'm going to add a little bit on either side of the knot. So we're wanting to shade any place that we think is behind what's next to it. So I'm going to add a little more paint to my brush and do the other side of the loop of the bow. So we're going to start here towards the top. Come down that outer edge and just let that trail off towards the bottom. And then we're gonna a little more paint. Come here along the top again. And we're going to pull that in towards the middle. And while that's wet, we're going to Flip the brush over, and I'm just pulling right, right sort of up against that to soften that together so we have, we don't have a hard edge on either side of the float. This gives us a nice soft edge. Now if you get too much of a, a line there, you can always take a, a little fluffy mop brush and just tap that a little bit, and that'll soften Soften that wet paint down a little. Just be sure to wipe the end of that paint off your mop brush onto a, a paper towel. You don't want that mop brush to ever get wet. You want it to stay very dry. Clean my brush out some again and let's do some shading on the bunny. He was our base color of raw sienna, so we want to go to something a little darker. See, we went from the yellow to the and shaded that with raw sienna. Now the bunny's based with raw sienna, so we're going to go to a darker brown to shade him. So I've got some burnt umber on my palette, and we'll tr we'll try that. Now burnt umber's, you can see that is really dark. So if we think that's too dark, we can always pick up a little bit of the raw sienna on the, the brush that we're side loading and just blend that in together and that'll soften that burnt umber down just a little bit. So let's come along and we're going to shade, again, we're going to shade where we think something is behind it, the thing next to it. So the hat brim should be in front of the face and the head goes up underneath it. So we're going to come along here and just shade underneath that hat brim. And 
And I've still got a little green paint in my brush, so get a little green edge there. I'm going to let that trickle down the sides just a little bit. I'm going to keep getting that green edge. I'm going to wipe out with my finger just a little. Because I don't really care if we have a little bit of green in the bunny. That just picks up our colors from the bow and reflects into his fur. I just don't want a hard edge. So and Then let's show shade here above his nose. So I'm gonna, again, paint's a little bit dry, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of water and re-wipe in that track on my palette where I had the brown. And then come back here and flow just above his muzzle and nose. Let that trail off on each side. We can also add a little shading here under the sides, under this white part of his muzzle. I'm going to just keep that edge kind of soft and jaggedy because we're going to have that be sort of furry. And I'm going to come down right under his mouth, but I'm just going to step it maybe a uh, an eighth of, of an inch away, so we're leaving like a little little lip under there. And we can come back and add a little bit of white or pink to that later. But you can see that little bit of the the base coat is still showing right below his lip. I'm gonna come up up the other side, and as I get to the top, just kind of narrow that back into the the lip line, let that disappear, and then um, just come down again the side of his muzzle. And I'm trying to get these top edges, I don't want them to be real angular, so I'm kind of rounding those off a little bit. And I don't want this to be a real smooth edge because we want fur in there, so I'm just jiggling my brush to create some texture. Okay, so you can see we've got him shaded all the way around his, his little muzzle now. And let's let that dry and work. I'm going to go back and work on the eyes a little bit. You can see, um, just kind of jump around because you don't want to work over top of paint that's wet. You want that to dry before you go on with another layer because if you're not careful, it can pick up the color that you've laid down underneath that's still wet. So let's. Um, Again, keeping to our color scheme, you can kind of see how I develop a design. I don't like to introduce a lot of new colors, so I'm thinking that we will, let's see, maybe we will bring some blues in, because I'd, I'd like, when we get into the, we're going to put some flowers on his, or her headband, and We'll put some blue flower petals in there. So let's pick up a little bit of blue. And this is um, Thalo Blue. And again, this is a pretty intense color. But we're going to just put it in a wash over top of the white so it doesn't get too dark. And we're going to 
paint in the whole, what I would consider the iris of the eye. Just going to fill that in, and you can see it's sort of transparent. We don't, we're not going for a real solid coverage. We want that, that white underpainting to glow through. Come in and do the other side. Just going for a fairly even wash. Now I'd like to, to deepen the color in her ears, the, the pink colors. So we can either float some more color in there or we can dry brush. But I think first we'll do some float. We'll do that same type of float where we did uh, meet it in the center so that we get a soft soft edge float. So I'm going to side load with a little bit of naphthol red in my brush. I've got pretty much water. I kind of call these juicy floats because um, I like a little bit of extra water in there because it helps the paint to bleed and it'll stay wet enough that we can blend it together. So I'm going to start here at the hat brim and pull up the center. You can see we're just adding a little bit more of that pink undertones and I'm going to flip the brush over and come up right up against it and pull those two together. So we've got her ear a little darker in the center and then it softens as we go out. And This will take several coats to build up. We're not going to try to get it in one, one layer. I'm going to swing these around, try to curve them out a little bit so we aren't so straight. Okay, so there. And because that paint's pretty juicy, when I touch down a little bit to go out, it, it helps the paint to kind of blend together and bleed together. Okay. So we'll let that side dry and do the same thing to the other side. Pick up a little bit of the red. I don't know if, you, if you can see this paint, I've got fairly much water in my brush, so it you know has a real watercolory look to it. And then we're going to start at the hat brim, come up the middle of the ear. I'm swinging out a little bit to give it a little bit of a curve. Come up here to the tip. Flip the brush over so the paint's towards the middle again. And the heel of the brush is outside. And just come up and follow that edge so that that paint blends together at the center. I'm going to pick up a little bit more paint. I feel like that one just didn't come in as dark as I'd like it to be. Reverse it and come up the other side. And remember, you can always um, take your your mop brush and just tap. I'm kind of holding the brush pretty much straight up and down and just pouncing it. And that helps because there's so much water on the surface that helps blend that paint together. Wipe that mop brush out so we don't have too much of a residue of paint in the tip. 
Now with any kind of painting like this, it, it's a matter of just continuing to build up layers. Right now we're working on all the shading. And in a minute we'll start adding some highlights. So I'm going to go another layer on the hat. We're going to start back again where we were. And we're going to float the raw sienna shading on the hat. And I'm just trying to, to build up these shadows a little more and reinforce the color. So we're just going to go back over everything that we did. And you'll see as each layer you put over top of each other, your layers will become smoother and they'll be the color will be a little more intense. And this works better than trying to put up a real heavy coat of paint to start. You'll get much better results if you just do layers of sheer color. And I think these second, once you get into the second and third floats, it also goes a little faster. So we're going to come across the top of the, the hat band. And then up alongside the ears. And the last place we had worked was here along the top of the, the brim, out here to the edge. Flip the brush over. Again, the paint is, you always want the, the long edge of the brush to have the paint, and that's going to be the, you're going to put that in the direction where you want your color to be the strongest. So I flipped it over so we're still we still have the paint at the top edge. Just soften that out to the end. And let's do the bunny again. He was in the the burnt umber. The other thing you'll find is you're you're floating these colors. When you first put the color down and it's wet, it looks looks a lot stronger and harsher, but as it dries it seems like it lightens and melds into the background more, so it's not as, doesn't jump out as much. So I'm going to soften that bottom edge so that we don't have a hard line. Now this time around I didn't even add any of the raw sienna to it. I just used just the plain burnt umber. We're going to go again around the, the nose. And you can see as the second layer goes on it, it smooths everything out a little bit. off down around this side. I think in this this round on the bunny I'm going to add a little bit of shading down here, here on these outer cheeks. So I'm just gonna just soften that down. Not going to come all the way down to the chin. I just sort of want this bottom of this um, cheek that pops out to the side, kind of like a chipmunk cheek. And then as I come down, I'm just kind of move my brush more towards the chisel edge and let that soften out to nothing. 
Let's do a second layer on the ribbon. And again, we were using the phthalo green yellow. I'm just going right over the areas that we had shaded the first time around. And any time you feel like you're running light on paint, just reload. You can see I very seldom clean my brush out as I'm side loading. I, I usually just tip it in the water a little bit. And I don't dip the brush straight into the water. I'll hold it against the side of my water container and slide it down. So I've got some pressure on the bristles and just slide it down so it dips in the water and slide it back up and that little bit of pressure against the side seems like it helps control how much water's in the brush versus just sticking the brush down in water. It's pushing a little bit of the water back out of it as you're holding it against the side of your water container. darken here underneath the chin a little bit on that knot. Let's um, shade the eyes a little bit. We've got that wash of blue over them so let's go back and side load with the phthalo blue. Take a little bit of extra water out just come here and float along the top edge of the iris to give a little extra boost of color. And walk that down just a little bit. Repeat on the side. So 
So we've just got a little darker shadow at the top of the iris, so like the eyelids casting a little shadow on there. And we can also, we haven't done anything with the nose yet, so we could add some, start adding some pink to the nose. And again, we're using just our, our Thalo Red. And because we're using just a wash of it, when we put it over that light base coat, it creates more of a pink color. Trying to, don't want any heavy smudges of the red on the end of my brush, so just making sure that's worked out. So let's just float, float here across the top of the nose. And again, the first float's going to be kind of rough and um, not look real smooth. So don't worry about that. Each each layer you build up adds to the smoothness. So and this is just a hint of color. I've got a little little piece of hair or something that was wanting to stay in there. Usually you're best to just let something like that dry and then brush it off after it's dry rather than risk smudging the color around too much. Like I just did, so. You just want to wash up that pink over the, the nose. So we'll let that sit and add just a little bit more to the tongue. We'll just go over the top of the tongue. Because it should get dark as it goes farther back in the mouth. feels dry so I'm going to go in and paint in the the iris of the eye and you can use you can use black to do that or you can also use your burnt umber and thalo blue mixed together and it'll make a kind of an organic black so whichever I think I'll do that because my black feels pretty empty so I'm just going to take a little bit of the the burnt umber on. I've got a little number two flat. And then pick up some of the the blue and just mix them together on my palette. Got a tiny touch of water. Then I'm gonna paint that iris. Paint the iris in. The one thing about mixed blacks is they're not quite so harsh as a a bottle of black and since we're again since we're using the colors that are in our palette that really makes this black blend in with the overall design but either way will work you know just a bottle of black is fine
trying to get my irises or the pupils to look more even in size. Sometimes that is trickier than you'd think.